Honorable honorees, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all of you. It's indeed an honor and a big privilege for me to again to be master of ceremonies at, at this most important and memorable occasion, the award ceremony. Awarding the Oslo Business for Peace Prize to five highly distinguished and deserving honorees is indeed an event charged with pride, with prestige, with glory and joy. But it does also send a signal to the rest of the international business community and to the world at large that conducting business with transparency according to high principles of ethical standards and also being successful on top of that is not only noticed by the international community, but is also indeed praised, encouraged, and like tonight, rewarded. Thus, we are gathered here in, this evening in the very same famous city hall as the Nobel Peace Prize laureates received their prizes uh, and diplomas. My name is Aina Lunde. Uh, I'm, uh, and for, for the last 40 years or so, I have been the master of ceremonies in a different setting than here tonight. I've been privileged to be the television news anchorman on the main channel here in Norway, in addition to being a foreign correspondent. And uh, so, so it's, it's a big pleasure for me to be within such an international community and, and um, gathering here tonight. And I must readily admit to you, though, that um, uh, rather than looking into the very dead and dull eyes of television cameras in the studio, it's wonderful to look into such beautiful, vivid, and radiant and interested eyes like you are here now tonight. So thank you for being here, all of you. Um, before we proceed, I want to thank the Norwegian Soloist Choir for beautiful musical opening of this award ceremony. And as we listen to their excellent voices, we could also see slides uh, on the two screens here of the pre 20 previous honorees uh, for Business for Peace. But now, now it's all about you, honorees 2013. And this year we have a slightly different procedure, and I will now call on each on, of the honoree, uh, or their representative actually, and they will stand up, uh, and then at the end, we'll all give them a warm round of applause, after which they will approach the stage and take seat uh, eventually at their seats and chairs on the stage. Uh, and I will be, there will be a fanfare, uh, a fanfare, and at the end of that fanfare, um, we will have them all seated here. So this is a slight difference from, from previous uh, award ceremonies. And I now shall call on each of you, the honorees, and you'll all stand up then. Miss Nadia al Sakaf of Yemen. Lord, uh, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll have the opportunity to clap for everybody at the end, and we'll clap individually later. We'll have lo lots of rounds of clapping. You can just enjoy it. But now we'll just do it quickly. So that was Nadia al Sakaf. Uh, Lord uh, James Abinger, represented Honorary Dean Seiken of the United States, Miss Margaret Groff of Brazil, Miss Connie Hasman of Denmark, and Mr. Arif Nakwi of Pakistan. And now we can all clap for them. Please be seated. Now, all you honorees 
are certainly not here tonight just by accident. During the past months, there's been a worldwide search and screening of candidates by the United Nations Development uh, Program, the UNDP, by the ICC and the individual chambers of commerce, as well as the Business for Peace Foundation here in Oslo. At the end of this nominating process, as we've heard from Mr. Per Saxegård, the independent high-level jury or awards committee, uh, consisting of Professor Michael Spence of the United States, uh, who has received the economic prize in memory of Alfred Nobel, and Mohammed Yunus of Bangladesh, who is a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, uh, have uh, evaluated the candidates and decided on this year's no honorees. And uh, speaking of Mohammed Yunus, and for the benefit of the visiting guests, I must share with you that uh, as a television anchor, I was very, very privileged to be maybe the first, at least the first one to interview uh, Mr. Yunus just a very, very few minutes after the, nom the, the uh, uh, big announcement of his prize in 2006. It was live on the air from our new, new studio in Oslo to the place where he was in Dhaka in Bangladesh. I'm pretty proud of that. So that was Mr. Yunus, yes. Anyway, now, the two award committee members or the jury have sent us, and indeed you, honorees, uh, their greetings. And here first is Mohammed Yunus, followed by Michael Spence. I have been with the award committee since the beginning. And I have seen how it impacts all over the world. The concept of being business worthy, that is creating economic value and creating value for the society at the same time, is a very powerful concept. It resonates with the enlightened leaders everywhere. Since the financial crisis, many have sought a new direction, new guidelines for the conduct of business. Being business worthy shows a win-win situation that is a long-term and far superior to the traditional win-lose situation. Much work remains, but the gain in the stature of the Oslo Business for Peace Award and its considerable supportive partners show great promise for the years to come. Initially, we were three members in the award committee. Unfortunately, we lost one the world's most admired person, Nobel laureate Wangari Matai. She is greatly missed. Her dedication, her ideas, and example will live on. However, as there can be little doubt that she showed the way in creating shared value between business and society. I wish the 2013 Business for Peace honorees will find happiness in their work. Their examples will inspire other business leaders while showing the society that business truly can be a force of good in the world. Thank you. Congratulations. Good afternoon. That's Mike Spence from Milan. I want to express my warm best wishes and admiration for this year's honorees. I've had the privilege of having a small role since the founding of the Business for Peace Award and uh, including uh, some chance to be part of the selection process. I can assure you uh, that that process is a very difficult one in the sense that there's many, many, many fine people who have made large-sized contributions to their societies and uh, and their businesses and their nations. And so I think it's an extraordinarily wonderful thing that the Business for Peace Award is being widely recognized, supported by many, many important uh, uh, institutions of a variety of kinds. And uh, I'm sorry I can't be with you to express my uh, admiration and respect for what you've done in person, but I hope you have a wonderful ceremony and I hope to be with you in a subsequent year. Prominent members of the jury. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, to the highlight of this evening, the awarding of the prizes. The procedure is as follows. After the announcement of each individual honoree, one of Norway's popular artists, a member of Artists' Council of Norway, uh, Miss Asta Businja Lydersen, will read a presentation, a tribute to each of the winners, after which the honoree will come forward, accompanied by one of our wonderful Norwegian hosts or hostesses, uh, to receive the prize and diploma from the governing mayor of Oslo, Stig Jan Berge Røsland, and the chairman of Business for Peace Foundation, Per Saxegård. In conclusion and before uh, announcement of the next winner, I shall conduct a very, very brief interview with each one of the honorees. And I will announce the honorees in alphabetical order. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first Business for Peace honoree in 2013 is Ms. Nadia al Sakaf from Yemen. Nadia al Sakaf, you are a visionary. Using the newspaper where she's an editor as a platform, Nadia al Sakaf is promoting freedom, human rights, and democracy through a number of effective actions. The Yemen Times and its companion, Radio Yemen Times, have created the first free public platform for expression in her country. The Yemen Times establishment is one of the few organizations in the nation to hire fresh graduates and provide them with intensive training and qualification programs inside and outside Yemen, thus building a highly skilled and confident generation of young Yemenis. The Yemen Times has paid for workshops on the labor code to educate its own staff on their rights and responsibilities thus also promoting a much-needed commitment to transparency and workers' rights. The group is also gender-balanced, having an equal number of female staff to men, which is unusual in Yemen. Under the leadership of Nadia al sakaf the Yemen Times establishment has motivated the Yemen community to develop through its civil society projects. Her activities have touched the hearts and minds of many Yemenis whose lives have been improved and whose attitudes have dramatically changed when it comes to the role of women in society. It comes to the advancement of democracy to increased transparency and the protection of minorities. For her ability to energize her staff and her nation towards seeking ways to promote the creation of shared value, Nadia al sakaf is from this day on a Business for Peace honoree. Nadia, you have just received um, a Business for Peace Award, yet your country is anything but peace in, in many, many ways. What do you think it takes to obtain a lasting peace in Yemen, your country? It takes the spirit in this room, which I will take in my suitcase and spread all around the country. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And And what is, what is the message from Oslo to your readers of Yemen Times? That Yemeni women rock. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Nadia. Now, the next business for Peace on the Read 2013 is Mr. Dean Seiken of the United States. Now, Mr. Seiken is very, very sorry that he could not make it here today, and he has a very valued, a valid, valid uh, excuse. His daughter is today being um, uh, inaugurated, no, not inaugurated, but uh, he has, a, what do you call it, all of a sudden? She's graduated. Graduated, thank you. <laughs> Graduated from college, his, el uh, his eldest daughter. I think that's a good excuse, isn't it? I think we should all give him a clap and send him a greetings from our hall. <laughs> now, Mrs. Eichen is, is being represented here today by a long time uh, and very close old friend, uh, Lord James Abinger, who is incidentally the ninth Baron Abinger in the beautiful county of Surrey in England. Uh, Lord Abinger, please. Well, in the day of modern day technology, it might be that Mr. Saikon will see a recording of this, so I will speak directly to Mr. Saikon. Dean Saikon, a trailblazer. Years ago, long before corporate social responsibility became a catchphrase, you decided to test a powerful idea. Can a business promote positive economic, social, and environmental change at the third world source and be profitable at the same time? This is a profitable and powerful idea because it states outright that a business is responsible for its entire chain of supply. It is powerful because it fights the general tendency to exploit suppliers. And it is powerful because it requires a business to remain faithful to its suppliers through thick and thin until mutual goals are achieved. Dean Saiken founded Dean's Beans to demonstrate that a company can achieve long-term profitable growth while actively improving the lives of all its suppliers. He has succeeded to an extent that delivers criticism to those companies who do not follow his philosophy. Being business worthy is to achieve economic value while also creating value for society. Dean's Beans designs and funds people-centered development projects in partnership with its coffee growers and returns a percentage of profits to the growers as a social equity premium. To Dean Saiken, corporate social responsibility and sustainability must be brought deeply into businesses as an integral part of decision making and not just be tacked on at the end as window dressing. This is truly a high ideal. And through his activities, Dean Saiken has demonstrated that it is also a profitable one. It leads to continuous growth and to mutual benefits too numerous to mention between his business and the societies in which it is active. For your leadership, you are hereafter to be known as a Business for Peace honoree. Congratulations, Lord Abinger, on behalf of uh, Dean Seiken. What do you think this prize will mean to Dean Seiken and to the conduct of his business? This will probably be one of the proudest days of Dean's life. And I, I can say that he's had many experiences in this world, but uh, he's always said that uh, to be awarded by the Business for Peace Foundation would be something uh, that he, he just couldn't believe. Um, I just want to mention that there, there is another precedent uh, set um, a long time ago by a Nobel laureate who wasn't able to make it to the ceremony. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt in, two th in 1906 
declined the invitation to come to the ceremony because he was hunting rhinoceros in Africa. <laughs> well, I think graduation is much better, really. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I can assure you that Dean is not hunting anything today. <laughs> no, caring for his daughter, that's, that's different, yes. Well, thank you very much, Lord Abinger. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, now for our next Business for Peace Honor in 2013, Miss Margaret Groff from Brazil. <laughs> Margaret Groff, you are tearing down barriers. Itaipu. The company where you have held several management positions, today as chief financial officer, is the world's largest hydroelectric power plant, operating on the border of three nations, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. Such an entity will undeniably have a strong impact on the communities surrounding it, and you have addressed that responsibility from the start. Margaret Groff is coordinating the Border Healthcare Working Group. It seeks to align public health policies in the tri-border area. She's a firebrand prom promoter of the participation of women in management. During the past nine years, the proportion, excuse me. During the past nine years, the proportion of women in management positions at Itaipu has doubled from 10% to 21%. You have founded several entrepreneurial and executive women's movements to empower women among stakeholders and suppliers in society at large, as well as in the academic community. You have worked to gain acceptance for sustainability principles and have been instrumental in getting stakeholders to participate in various areas, to develop gender, equity policies, to improve company culture, to include the people of the region in decision processes, and to strengthen education in the areas of environment, finance, and consumption. You have achieved this in a region of the world that traditionally presented great barriers to such developments. You have shown that stronger growth and a more peaceful coexistence results when these barriers are removed. For your ceaseless and business-worthy contribution to the advancement of shared value, you are hereafter a Business for Peace honoree. Congratulations, congratulations, Margaret Groff. Um, you, you just heard that you have actually increased the percentage of women managers in that large company of yours uh, from 10% from nine years ago to 21% now. That's quite an accomplishment. What is your next goal? Uh, I spread the, I will spread in, in encouraging the applicate more and more the model uh, gender equality of Taipu and the entrepreneurs and uh, the supplier for imp empowerment women. I believe empower women initiatives is a, a fast step, uh, the practical inspiration and uh, uh, the uh, cultura, uh, change the culture for the news world. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much, Margaret Groff. Yes, from Brazil. Margaret Groff from Brazil. Our next Business for Peace on the Read 2013 is from Denmark, Connie Hasman.
Connie Hasselmann, you are a spreader of fulfillment. In 1995, you decided to show the world that disabled people are a valuable labor resource on an equal footing with other workers. You found ways to help the disabled achieve a sense of fulfillment by helping them contribute and participate instead of being passive recipients of assistance. Your company, Tele Handelshuse, has shown the way. It operates on market terms without underlying public support and has a wide range of customers from both, both the private and public sector. You have established a successful business and a job training facility, helping integrate disabled people into mainstream employment. You are actively promoting the example of your company, thus inspiring other decision makers. Telehandelshuse employs the blind and the visually impaired, traditionally the groups with the lowest employment rates in Denmark. Yet, six out of eight students who have gone through your company's training have been employed afterwards. And your company is growing, a certain sign of the success of your achievements. The Oslo Business for Peace Award honors enlightened leadership in areas within and outside the businesses the honorees have established or are a part of. Your dedication and drive has taken you to participate in local, national, and international networks where you advocate your social mission. You are making others rethink their recruitment strategies and initiating new projects. Your model demonstrates that comprehensive rehabilitation of the disabled can have fulfilling employment as its outcome. Your example is both scalable and adaptable across sectors and national borders. Connie Hesman, for truly having shown how shared value can be achieved to the advancement for both business and society, you are now a Business for Peace honoree. Congratulations, Connie Hasselmann. Very, yes, lovely. And, and with disabled people, you've done it. Yes. yes. Um, you've had success with this concept. Uh, how do you see that this is adaptable in other countries, or is it just for Denmark? I can see that uh, many parts of the world can do the same as we do. Uh, we run a successful business and uh, be responsible and uh, help people get on their feet again when they have lost a job because of some disability and sell the, our services on market. I think it can be done in many places in the world. But certainly, I mean, a lot of, it happens throughout the world, but, but not on this scale. Uh, you must have been able to crack a code somehow. I think it's a combination of being a business person and believing in other persons. And when you put those things together, you get fiber out of it. and. Yeah, I, I think it's it's not that difficult. Okay, fine. Thank you very much and congratulations. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the last but indeed not the least business for peace on the read 2013 is from Pakistan. It's Arif Nagri. Arif Nakvi, you are turning the world on its head. Arif Nakvi promotes transparency, accountability, and sustainability in a world where business often spends vast resources to achieve their opposites. He has stated that stakeholder value must be on a level with or surpass shareholder value in the investment activities of the Abraj Group, a group he founded and leads. 
This is a powerful idea, but one that is not mainstream in a world of business where too often it is claimed that shareholder interests, by definition, must trump all others. By demanding a focus on stakeholder value, that is, on value for parties outside the business itself that are affected by its operations, NACVI is accelerating the process of shared value, while at the same time demonstrating it is still possible to achieve impressive profitability. The Business for Peace Foundation is convinced that companies seen to be a positive force in the communities where they are active will be assisted and supported by those same communities. Where mutual benefit is achieved, there are improved prospects for peace and prosperity and for the establishment of strong trust. RF Nakvi is promoting responsible business practices through many channels. In education and mentoring efforts, in school and vocational centers that have been built, and through a sustainability council that challenges and measures performance according to ethical and responsible benchmarks. In recognition of his enlightened leadership, Arif Nakvi has been invited to serve on the board of the United Nations Global Impact. I'll try again. The United Nations Global Compact. And he's collaborating with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on various initiatives. Among them, an effort to educate the Arab world on responsible business practices. For initiating numerous examples of how business can also benefit stakeholders, Arif Nakvi is from this day on a Business for Peace honoree. Congratulations, Arif Nakvi. Um, heavy. It's heavy, that's good, yes. What sort of impact do you think this prize will have on your conduct of business in your big, big corporation? I think, um, well, I don't know how it will change my conduct. I'm going to go to work and do the same thing tomorrow that I did today. Uh, but I think that it is going to empower a lot of my colleagues who are really the reason why I'm here. And I think at the end of the day, when organizations such as mine are privileged enough to do the things they do, I merely lead them. It is the fact that the people that I happen to be lucky enough to lead feel the same way. This really me will mean a lot to them. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving me. And also, I, I must ask you, as a newsman, you know, you had the elections last Saturday, you know? <laughs> and I, I can't help it. Is that all right? <laughs> Okay, yes. So what, what is your opinion of, of, of the result of the election? Do you think this would be good or bad for Pakistan? I think, well, I'm glad you asked the question because I was dying to say it anyway. I think, <laughs> I think that uh, Pakistan is embarked on an absolutely brand new journey. And we in Pakistan call it the new Pakistan. The fact that we've had democratic elections, the fact that we've had 60% of the people turn out and express their view, and more importantly, the fact that rig religious... Uh, and factional parties have been marginalized, and the country is now once again showing to the rest of the world that it is a liberal democracy. I think everybody here in this room should spread the message that you can do business with Pakistan. It's a great country. Fine, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, and I've now called on all the honorees to come forward to the center stage.
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much to the Norwegian Soulways Choir and its director, Greta Pedersen. Thank you very much. And um, for this contributing with excellent music and beautiful music this evening. And uh, we now have the uh, chance again to, to give a warm applause to the whole group of honorees. We started now and we can conclude without music as well. Coming to the, we are coming to the end of this prize uh, ceremony here in Oslo City Hall. And again, uh, we want to congratulate all the honorees with their highly deserved uh, awards. For those in the audience now who are expected at the Akershus Fortress uh, after the ceremony, there will be buses waiting for you just outside. Now, to all of you, I want to say thank you very much for being present here tonight uh, and sharing this very precious moment with the winners and the organizers the Business for Peace Foundation, the UNDP, the International Chamber of Commerce, uh, the, the City of Oslo, and the Oslo City Chamber of Commerce. And thank you everyone, and the honorees will remain here on the stage for a photo session just now. Uh, let's give them a final round of applause and have a wonderful, wonderful evening in Oslo, yes, okay.